All right, Algebra 2, we're talking about some of the basic stuff in trigonometry that you're going to start learning uh, that you'll need for next year. And uh, so we want to give you an introduction in the, in the next, the last part of this course before the final exam will be about the trig. And uh, today we want to talk about um, SOHCAHTOA, something you remember from geometry as well as the 30-60-90 right triangle and the 45-45-90 right triangle. So uh, let's start with that 45-45-90 right triangle. We've got two sides that are the same. It's an isosceles right triangle. Uh, we know that the base angles of an isosceles triangle are the same, and this one is an isosceles right. So these two sides are the same, and if we use the Pythagorean theorem, uh, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And obviously, take the square root. We have the square root of 2x squared, or x times the square root of 2. So that is how we find the hypotenuse, right? We multiply the side length by radical 2. And likewise, if you want to go backwards from x radical 2 back to the side length or a leg length, you have to divide by radical 2. So we'll... we'll do a couple examples here. Um, so find x. You're given the hypotenuse. Find x. Well, this is the version I was just describing to you. You're going from the hypotenuse back to the leg. So you need to take 5 and divide by radical 2. Now that technically is the answer right there. But uh, we rationalize our denominators. And so rationalizing means we multiply the top and bottom by the square root in order to get a whole number in the denominator. So your answer should be given to us as 5 radical 2 over 2. 5 radical 2 over 2. Uh, the other direction is a lot easier. Uh, so, oops, too far. So for instance, if you have the leg length and you want to go to the hypotenuse, you are multiplying by radical 2. Uh, that's as uh, difficult as it gets, right there. There's no simplifying that needs to go on there. So that's the 45, 45, 90 right triangle, pretty basic and easy. Okay, what happens if it's a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, right? Well, the 30, 60, 90 right triangle has a short leg, a long leg, and a hypotenuse. Obviously, the long leg is opposite the 60-degree angle, and the short leg is opposite the 30-degree angle. Now, to go from the short leg to the long leg, you need to multiply by radical 3. Likewise, if you were going backwards, you would divide by radical 3. And if you want the short leg, using the Pythagorean theorem, if we say x squared plus x radical 3 squared, and then take the square root of that. That's uh, x squared plus 3x squared, which is 4x squared, and the square root of that would be 2x. So you double the short leg. The hypotenuse is just double the short leg. And likewise, if you want to go from the hypotenuse back to the short leg, you just cut it in half. All right, so let's see. Let's get some examples here. We need to find x and y. We'll start with something easy where we know the short leg, and we want to find the hypotenuse. As we said just a minute ago, it would be double that value, or 8. The uh, long leg is to be multiplied. You take the short leg, and you multiply by radical 3. Can't be simplified, so those are my answers. What about if I have the hypotenuse and I want to find uh, the other two? Well, take the uh, long or the hypotenuse and go back to the short leg. We do that by cutting it in half. So x is equal to 3. And then we go from the short leg to the long leg by multiplying by radical 3. Not much you can do there with those two. And we're done. Well, what if I have the long leg and I want to find the others? Well, this would be the most difficult. 
of the three, in my opinion. You have to take the long leg and divide by radical three to get the value of y. And because we don't like to leave them with irrational numbers in the denominator, we rationalize it, giving me 10 radical three over three. That's the value of y. Now, to find the value of x that goes with it, we uh, need to take that value and double it. So x, not too difficult. Double the short leg, right? That gives me 20 radical 3 over 3 for x. So that's your 30, 60, 90, and your 45, 45, 90. Now to go on to our definition for Sokotoa, right? That's the definition for sine, cosine, and tangent. Those are the three basic trig functions that we'll start you off with. Uh, those are the ones that we'll cover this year. We'll talk about others next year. The uh, sine of angle A, abbreviated S-I-N of angle A, is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. That's how we get these three letters up here in the abbreviation Sokotoa. Opposite would be A. Hypotenuse is always C. So that would be A over C. Well, what if we were dealing with cosine? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's see here. Adjacent is the one next to. So the side next to angle A is B. And of course the hypotenuse is C. So this would be B over C. And the last one is tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be A over B. So that's how you would find tangent. So we're going to do several problems here involving these three trig functions. It's our job to pick out the correct trig function to use based upon what we have and what we want to know. Okay, so we want to solve for x. We have a 29 degree angle down here. We've got a side length of 4. It is a right triangle. It looks like we have the opposite side, and we want to know the adjacent side. So that sounds like a job for tangent. The tangent of 29 degrees is opposite over adjacent. Now, if you know anything about proportions, the only way to solve a proportion is to cross multiply. So we have 4 times 1 divided by tangent 29 is equal to x. Let's see if we can get this on screen here. Uh, 4 divided by tangent 29. 7.2, approximately. Well, what about the next one? We want to know the opposite side. We have the hypotenuse. Opposite hypotenuse. That sounds like a job for sine. So sine of 37 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. Once again, this is a proportion. The only way to solve proportions is to cross multiply. Uh, 9 times sine 37. Division by 1 is not that difficult, folks. So... Uh, Nine sine thirty seven. Five point four. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, now I want to know the adjacent side. I have the hypotenuse. Adjacent hypotenuse, that sounds like cosine. So cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Once again, proportions are solved by cross-multiplying. In this case, division by 1 is not going to be that difficult. So x is equal to 16 cosine 21. Right? Division by 1 is uh, a fairly simple process. 16 cosine 21. Looks like 14.9. 14.9. Okay, so what happens if I have two sides, but I don't know the angle, and I'm being asked for the angle? So let's think about the trig function that we should be picking. We have opposite, we have adjacent. Opposite and adjacent sounds like tangent. So the big question I have is, how do I get rid of tangent so that x is by itself? Well... Uh, that's pretty easy. Uh, we have a button, we have um, a function called tangent inverse. So we need tan minus 1. That's tangent inverse. So x is equal to tangent inverse of 8 over 11. Now you're probably wondering if your calculator will handle that, and yes it does. You talked about that back in geometry. Uh, right above the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons are sine inverse, cosine inverse, tangent inverse, which that's the one we want in this case, right? Second tangent button, that gives me tan inverse 8 over 11. 36 degrees, pretty close to 36. Look at that next one. Adjacent hypotenuse. Adjacent hypotenuse, that's cosine. Cosine of x is adjacent over hypotenuse. Once again, x is only going to be found with a, an inverse function. So cosine inverse 6 over 13, 62.5 degrees. Opposite hypotenuse. Opposite hypotenuse. That's a job for sine. Sine of x is opposite over hypotenuse. So we can invert the sine, right? x is going to be equal to sine inverse of 2 fifths. And it looks like our answer is 23.6 degrees. 23.6 degrees. So, we're either going to be cross-multiplying because it's a fraction, or we're going to be inverting the, the trig function to find the answer. Not too terribly difficult as long as we pick the correct trig function. All right, talk to you in class.